this time of worship together. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is fear. I speak Jesus. Come on, we sing your name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. speak his name and I just want to speak the name of Jesus come on over fear and over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by oppression I speak Jesus come on we lift him up cause your name Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Come on, we declare his name this morning. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over.
would you just stay with your eyes closed and your heads bowed down? I don't know what you brought into this service. Maybe nothing but a pure hunger for God, but maybe you're struggling because we all go through trials and tribulations in an area in our, your life. We're going to partake of communion. Communion is for those who really know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And Jesus becomes everything over everything in your life. He becomes the Lord, Jesus over my Father, my life. And if you want to partake of communion, but you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you right now to make the greatest decision you can ever make for this life and for eternity. Surrender your life to Jesus. You don't know what it is. Nobody of us really knew what it was. And it was way better than we ever imagined it was going to be. Maybe you're tired of making your own decisions and failing. Struggling with areas in your life that you cannot overcome. You need Jesus. We all need Jesus. And if that's you, I invite you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, I need Jesus in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for my sins. I repent of all my sins. Holy Spirit, come into my life and make me a new person. I say no to the world. I say no to the things that attract me till now. I want you, Jesus, to be the greatest ever in my life. Lord, I ask you that you will just touch people's lives this morning. That your Holy Spirit will come and they will experience the miracle of salvation in their lives. They will know, they will know that something is going on, that is something new, something fresh, something beautiful. That is you coming into their lives, Lord. What we have experienced, would you please, Lord, have mercy on those who have repented of their sin and just do it, Lord. I know that you will. Lord, and I ask you for those who are about to partake of communion this morning. Lord, I ask you that your spirit will work inside of us. If there is an area we need to repent of a relationship with you or with others, that we will do it right now so we can come to your table, Lord, ready to receive whatever you have for us, Lord. Would you just do that? Say, Holy Spirit, move me to an area of my life that I've been messing around with sin. Move me, God. Move my spirit and repent, of Lord. Don't take lightly communion so you can receive all the blessings that God has for you as we partake. Lord, we come before you and we thank you, Jesus, for the bread that represents your body and the wine that represents your blood. You pay the highest price. You gave your life so we can have our life new in you, Lord. I ask you, God, that you will just bless in a special way those who need physical healing will receive it. Those who need whatever they need to your spirit will just minister. Would you just fill that first layer? Partake of the bread and partake of the wine. And allow God to minister to you as we continue to worship this morning. As you continue. The Bible says there's somebody among you sick. Call the elders of the church and they will anoint them with oil. And the faith, the prayer of faith will heal that person. If they have committed sin, they will be forgiven. So I'm going to be on my left and your right here. And I'm ready to anoint you with oil and pray for you. And if you want to just come, just come to the front and I'll pray for you as we continue worshiping this morning.
Holy is your name. Your word says that without holiness, nobody will see you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can sing holy, 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 holy. And Lord, I ask you for your Holy Spirit to start moving in this moment in this room, Father God. Lord, there is people who are struggling with the same stinky sin for too long, God. And they need to come to a place where your Spirit speaks to them in a way that they can really, really repent and make one and for all a decision about the sin of their lives, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you are hungry for more of God in your life, I want you to, let's sing this song one more time, please, Brianna. Let's sing this song and let's just keep singing. And I'm going to stay in that corner. I'm going to start praying that the Holy Spirit will take you to a place where you can encounter the beauty of the beautiful life of holiness. David said the holiness of God is beautiful. And he had experienced sin and he said the beautiful life is the life of holiness. Lord, I pray this morning over this church, God. 
I pray for these last days that your Holy Spirit will work in our hearts and will help us to throw away everything that is dirty from our lives. Jesus, even things that we don't do, but we entertain with our eyes and with our ears, Father God, and they interfere in our relationship with you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's sing this song one more time. If God is speaking to you, I encourage you to just come to this altar. Kneel where you are, sit down, just stretch your hands to heaven and say, God, please, Holy Spirit, help me to understand there is a way better life, a life of victory over sin in my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's sing this whole song again.
raise our hands towards heaven this morning. And why don't we just see it like we believe it? you this morning with our hands lifted to you God God we just give you everything we just lay it down at your feet Father I just pray that that would be our prayer this morning that we would just cry holy 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 is your name Father I just pray that you would allow your Holy Spirit God to work through us and in us God draw us closer to you this morning God we thank you for what you're doing in our life God and in our family and in our church and God we just love you so much and we just give you all the power and the glory and the honor. And everyone said amen. Come on, let's give God some praise this morning. Amen. Would you just say hello to somebody? Maybe step out of your step out of your place and hug somebody, greet somebody, meet somebody, encourage somebody. you to brag on him for a moment. Has he done anything for anybody in the house? Has he made a way for anybody in the house tonight? Come on, fellowship. I need you like this. Come on. If you can go back to your seat so I can. <laughs> Praise Jesus. I want to invite to the, where is she, the most beautiful woman in the universe to come to the front. There will never be somebody prettier than her in my eyes. She has a great a couple announcements for the ladies. Would you receive, I'm, I'm going to tease Katie. She hates it when you say the first lady or the pastor wife. She just wants to be Katie. We don't do that stuff here. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see so many smiling faces. So we have, I just want to give a couple small amount, or short announcements about our ladies' ministry. So I wanted to remind everybody, every lady here, sorry, lady in here, on the first and third Tuesday of every month, we have a woman's Bible study in this place at 10 o'clock in the morning, and Sister Ruth leads that, and they are starting a new book called The Wife of Noah. So that sounds kind of interesting. I wonder what it would have been like to live with all these animals just because your husband said we had to, right? <laughs> so I think that's going to be an interesting Bible study. So I encourage everybody, it's starting this Tuesday at 10 o'clock, and it's every other Tuesday, the first and third Tuesday of every month. And also, we normally have our evening women's gathering the second Tuesday of every month, but we're doing it this coming Tuesday at 6 o'clock because we have a special missionary, Marissa McCarty. She is a missionary to Saudi Arabia. She's a single woman spreading the word of God in Saudi Arabia. So that she, she's going to come and share with us 
minister to us, encourage us. And I just encourage every lady in here, if you've never come before, come this Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to have snacks. We're going to listen and just be encouraged by a woman who really is giving her all to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. So I encourage you all, Tuesday at 10 in the morning, learn about what it's like to live with animals. And Tuesday night at 5 o'clock, to be inspired and encouraged to give 100%. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget also a few more announcements. Saturday, September 16th, church cleanup. Everybody's welcome from 9 in the morning to 1 p.m. Also Wednesday night, a 7 youth service for all the teenagers. And Thursday night, Bible study, a 7 for the whole entire family. Talking about missionaries, you guys gave more than $700 to the kids last Sunday when they were running around. Yeah, that is so good. That is so good. These little kids, man, I was so excited. We know they started BGMC this year, $1,000. And then the first day we do two runs, and they have been, they collected already several hundred. And then they went to $2,000 or more than that. And now they set up for $4,000, the goal for the end of the year. And we are helping them, and you are helping them. And it's Mission Sunday. We have about 17, 59, I don't know exactly the number because they, sometimes they come out of the field and we put new missionaries around the world. And you say, Pastor, the Bible says that the tithe belongs to the Lord. I'm giving it to him. I'm not using it. But you're talking about missionaries now? Let me tell you, the last words of Jesus says, go to the whole world and preach the gospel. And I know there are some people in this church who spends more than 20 bucks a month just to feed the dogs and cats. Can I have an amen on that? And so I think if you can spend that much or more in makeup or whatever you're doing, let the Lord put in your heart an amount of dollars that you want to give the first Sunday of every month to support our missionaries. Amen? I don't know if your dogs and cats go to heaven, but I tell you, your dollars will go to the missionaries who are preaching the gospel. And it's one of the greatest things we can do with our lives. And also we need a couple of helps with the nursery, the third service, the first week of the month, first Sunday, third service, and the third week of the month, second service. So if you want to help us with the nursery, uh, I done it. So if I can do the nursery, anybody can do it. And it's just watching the kids. It's one of those ministries that need help all the time. But let's go to the Bible today. And, and we are in the series of the armor of God. And I'm just so excited to see this whole scripture and what God is trying to do in our church. God has been speaking to people's life. In the last few days, people have been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the external evidence of speaking in tongues. And God is doing this, and we're going into that. We're going into the part of the armor of God where you need to be empowered by God to do the fight. Let's go in the Bible. It says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the vials of the devil. But before then, that Paul says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And this is in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness of the heavenly places. And then it talks about stand and stand and stand and stand. And then it starts talking about when you're standing and you learn to stand and you learn to be strong, you need to go into the spiritual places where in the heavens, not in the heaven where God is, but in another spiritual place. Where, where, where God has given freedom to the demons to operate, you and I need to go in there. And how do we do that? Verse 18, praying always. How often? Always. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Big as being watchful to this. And with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, Jesus says to three guys, pray for me. Paul says, pray for me. We got to pray for each other. For me, the utterance, the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly. How come? Boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. 
The gospel was a mystery for you and for me for many years until somebody prayed and the Holy Spirit came and took that veil in front of us and we recognized that we are sinners and only Jesus Christ can save us. Amen. And that's what Paul is saying here. Let's pray, Father God. I thank you this morning because your Holy Spirit is in this place. And I ask you, God, that you will speak things to our lives that we are, that I don't say things that your Spirit is trying to take us in these latter days to a place in the spiritual where we are not just standing and going to heaven by ourselves, but we are entering the spiritual places with God like David, with our life of prayer, with the understanding and also in the spirit. Lord, because this world is wicked going down even worse and worse. And your church need to rise in the power of God to bring souls to your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord, I believe, is calling us in these days to enter. Where, Pastor? To enter where the rulers of the darkness of this age are ruling. Powers, principalities, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Always pray. But it's so interesting that Paul here doesn't say just pray. He says in verse 18, praying always with all prayer supplication in the spirit. Big S, what is he talking about? In the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, my friends, no offense to anybody. But the, let me tell you, no offense. I know this can offend you. But the Church that Jesus established was a Pentecostal church full of the power of the Holy Spirit. I know that you can get bothered by this. And I'm not trying to exalt any denomination. What I'm trying to tell you is that we cannot operate in the places where God wants to take us in the spiritual for our lives, for our family, for our marriages, for our kids, and for our churches, for our community. If we don't go back to praying in the Spirit. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the external evidence of speaking in tongues. And you may struggle, and you have heard maybe this message before, and you feel like something is wrong because you don't receive it. But I'm praying right now that God is going to start doing this because Paul says they pray always. I cannot pray for an hour or two. I cannot personally be praying. But when I, for a long time, always interceding, but I can be driving, and I can be I'm praying in the spirit, and I pray, and I pray, and I pray, and in the middle of the night, I am tired, but I'm praying in the spirit, and when I wake up in the morning, it's not easy for me praying and understanding, because the enemy is attacking me, because praying is work, it's a spiritual work, it's like you're fighting a war. It's not just Padre Nuestro que estás en los cielos santos. No, 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 no. It's praying. It's a war that you are doing. God calls us to be armor, the armor, soldiers of God. It's not a walk in the park. It's a, a warrior thing. And we need the power. And you need the power. And that's why the Bible says, pray always in supplication in the spirit. I am a weak person. You are a weak person. And I talked about holiness. And, and, and holiness, my friends, I'm telling you, I'm just getting mad at how many Christians will fall by the lies of Satan and how that is destroying their lives with the lies of Satan to sin. Mm. 
Am I condemning you? No. I'm telling you, God wants to take you to a different place in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why go with me in the Bible in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 is not going to show up here. And I hope you don't get mad because I make you open your Bible. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Go with me please there. Look what the Bible says. Look what Paul says. Look what he has experienced. He talks about a relationship with God. He talks about a power in God. That is just for all of us. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16. That he, big H, who is that? God will grant you, will give you, will give you, will put inside of you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in the inner man. Another translation says, I pray, Paul says, for every person in the, in the church of Ephesus and all the churches who are going to receive this, this letter that I have planted, I pray that God will be granting you with the great rich Another translation says, the glorious unlimited resources of his power is not the sin, is not the problem. The problem is that we are not full with the Holy Spirit. Sin cannot be bigger than the power of God. Can I have an amen on that? This God who created the universe and they see and the, the trouble of the speed of light. They're finding more and more and more planets who are years and years of distance of the speed of traveling and the speed of light. This is a universe they cannot find. He created all of that. And Paul is saying, I pray that God will grant you with the unlimited resources of his mighty power. So when temptation comes, you say, no, in the name of Jesus Christ, get away from me, Satan. And you just keep, you start praying, and you start interceding. And when you want to criticize somebody, want to get mad at somebody, when you just want to act in the flesh, you know, you just understand, you are full of the Holy Spirit. My friends, this is only possible by walking in the spirit because the more you do something the more you are going to want to do that and i'm here to tell you with all the love in my heart the more your feet your flesh your flesh is going to win every single time but the more you feed your spirit with the power of god What feeds you? How I listen to worship. Ooh, I go crazy. I just feel the Holy Spirit. Get more of that worship inside of you. Always praying. Always fasting. Always speaking in tongues. Whatever it is. My friends, the Bible says, I pray, says Paul, that you would strengthen. In South America, where I grew up, the high power of the power lines, electrical, what they carry, heavy power. How much is that? 12,000 volts, I understand. There's people who don't have much. And so it's just land under there. The cows eat sometimes. Sometimes something else going on. But it's just people that have nothing. They go and they live under the high power electricity lines. A house made out of boards, cardboard, plastic, a tent. And you can go in the middle of the night and they have a little candle like this. That's all the power they have. A little candle in that one little room where the whole family lives. And on top of them, 12,000 volts of electricity. I believe this. There is Christians all around the world who live that kind of life. In the power of the Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. 
verse 16. Therefore, says Paul, do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. What is he talking about? Is he drinking some specially kind of juice? He says, Paul, he's getting old. He says, my physical body is decaying. But inside of me, I fill myself with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I fill my life with God. And he talks about praying always in the Spirit. What is this? This is what Joel chapter 2, go with me pretty quickly. We'll go through a few scriptures here. The book of Joel is in the Old Testament. One of the greatest men in the Bible. Right there after Isaiah, you just keep flipping before Matthew, before you just go. It's just, just a few chapters. And here Joel, the prophet Joel, is talking about the last days. Now, if you think that the disciples received the Pentecost and the baptism of the Holy Spirit with external evidence of speaking in tongues, and that was 2,000 years ago, we are more in the last days than those guys 2,000 years ago. Can I have an amen to that? It just, just makes just logic. They couldn't be in the last days, and we are in the early days if we are after them. Can I have an amen to that? And the Bible says here, Joel, Chapter 2, verse 28, it will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit, big S. God will pour his spirit on how much? All oh, mankind and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions, even on the male and female servants. I will pour out my spirit in those days. Listen to what the Bible is saying here, my friends. Listen to what the Bible is saying. Please don't be distracted. The Bible says that in his last days, after this, he will pour out of his spirit on all mankind. And your sons, this is what I want for my sons. This is what I want for my daughters. Don't you want this? That's what I want. I want more than just live and forgive me the expression. But I told my one student that I had in the middle class, middle school class last Thursday, when I became a Christian, I said, I am now starting to live. I am not going to live like the last few days of my life, just like a little animal. I told them about me. Because animals do what? They born, they grow. They have a family. They feed the family, they make a cave somewhere where they have the family, they get old and they die. And I told this young man, God has called you to live not like an animal. And this is a young man full of God. Just got baptized in fire for Jesus. And I said, God wants to use you to move people from the kingdom of the darkness, from the kingdom of hell into the kingdom of God. That is the plan for you. You don't have to live like a little fox in the field who is born and feeds mama. And mama feeds him. And then he gets grow up. And he finds a wife. And he has a little cave somewhere. And he has kids. And then he gets old and he dies. God has a plan for your life. And he has a plan for my life. And he has a plan for this church. And he has a plan for the church of the, of the latter days where are us. 
It is to move people from the darkness into the light of Jesus. But that is impossible unless we understand verse 18 and 19 where Paul says, you have to pray always and you have to be praying and pray for me because the world is going to be changed by two things. People who pray and people who preach. They're not just only preaching, but they are preaching under the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit will come after they live a life of real praise. Don't do ministry alone. If you work with the kids, you prepare your class, you pray. If you do the parking lot, you pray. If you're cleaning the church, you pray as you clean the church. You are praying. Because you and I don't have the power to heal a mosquito from a headache. But God can change the heart of every man and every woman. And the Bible says, ask and you should receive. Why should I receive what he receives? He is praying and he's asking God. But I am not praying. God is not going to give me the same that he gives to him. Because he is doing what God says. And so God is not going to give me. The Bible says, ask and you should receive. The church, the marriage, the couple, the minister, the the people that is praying, he will answer those prayers. And those who don't want to pray, it's up to you. Are you here with me? How many moms we have in this room? Let me see your hands. How many grandmas we have in your room? How many daddies we have in the room? How many grandpas we have in the room? God called you to pray for your kids and your grandkids because the Bible says in the last day I will pour my spirit and not only on my kids from my lawn but every kid that I have in the house and every spiritual kid that God helps me to have in this place and the people that is under the ministry, the Bible says in the last day I will pour out my spirit. Because I know that in the last days, more than anything else, the enemy is going to increase, the Bible says, his work. And you cannot do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why jump with me to the book of Acts. Joel, you're crazy. You're by yourself. What are you talking about? He prophesied more than 400 years before than this. And look what happened. Look what happened in Acts. Verse 2, verse chapter 2 and verse 4. Chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. How do you know that? They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was given them. utterance. Who gives the utterance? Who gives the power? Who gives the authority? Who gives it? The Holy Spirit. And they begin to speak. And people from all these nations, hundreds and hundreds of miles away from there, they were speaking uh, languages. They were far away until 900 miles. Countries, the dimensions here in the Mesopotamia and the Pamphylia and Prihilia and all these places. And they're speaking in tongues. And the multitudes are getting together. Because what's going on here? And what did they say? They all drank. Listen. The enemy wants you to believe that this baptism of the Holy Spirit with speaking in tongues is the stupidest, dumbest, foolish thing that you will ever believe in. You know why he works so hard? Because he knows that that is the center of of the power of God for you and the people around you. It is not a joke that this is the subject that divides churches. This is the subject that divides denomination because the enemy is behind working what is important. Wouldn't you? And the Bible says they spoke in tongues and they keep speaking in tongues. And God is there and the Holy Spirit is moving in this place. And then continue, flip the page if you have to, to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and verse 14. But Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. 
Let's, let's listen to what Peter says. Men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known. Talk about this that just happened. Tell everybody about this that just happened. You who read the Old Testament, you who know the prophet Joel, they'll tell others and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose for it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last day, God's that God says. I will pour out of my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your, and your old men shall dream dreams. This is for everybody. This is for everybody. The Bible says in the same chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's talking about the same thing. And Paul says, I pray in tongues more than all of you, talking about the church in the, of the Corinthians. How did he know that? Because the Bible says the praying in tongues edifies a person. And nobody was doing what Paul was doing. Edifying means building. You agree with me? Edifying means building. You have a building of four feet by four feet. You cannot do much with this little room, but you have a building of 4,000 square feet. You can do a lot more. And that is you and that is me. The more we pray in the spirit, the more we pray in tongues, the more God will build us. And the bigger capacity you are going to have. That's why this man is saying, you have to pray in the spirit. He says, I pray in the spirit more than all of you. And he he wrote more than half of the New Testament. The secret of this man, I believe, one of the greatest secrets, not only that he was fully consecrated to God, but he understood the power of praying in tongues. I pray in the spirit, he says, but I pray also with my understanding. I pray, I sing in the spirit, and I sing also in my understanding. You and I need to go back to the church that Jesus left in the book of Acts. Because you'll receive power, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be my witness. What is the greatest thing a witness can bring into the courtroom? Evidence. Yes or no? What is the greatest evidence you and me can have? Souls transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. Look at him. Came seven, eight years ago. Not knowing anything about Jesus. He now is a youth pastor ministering to all these kids. That is the evidence I want to take to the courtroom in front of the world. I'll tell you what, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad, but I want to take another evidence. My sons and my daughters transformed by the Holy Spirit. Not because me and Katie are such a great parents. It's because God Almighty has mercy. And that's why Paul says, I'll pray in the Spirit. I'll pray with understanding. What's your problem? Oh, I know. 
Rafa's problem. I'll pray in the understanding. But I don't know your problem. I don't know your problem. I don't know your problem. That's what I have to wake up in the morning and say, Tinta Rabba Kasama, Anda Rabba Kaya Sanda. And I'm thinking about Sadaba Kanda, Rubaba Sanda, Kababa Sibaba. And the Holy Spirit is praying through me. Are you following me here? This is not a show. This sounds like a show because you're not used to this. But when you are into this, you will totally understand what I'm saying. And I don't need to call my sister and say, What's going on? I just feel in my spirit to pray in the spirit. And do Rabba Sama. And God who knows her need is praying through me because the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. And I'm allowing myself to put my time and my energy to intercede and God will reward the prayer. Can I have an amen on that? Or you can just go and wash your car all day long. I know those. You can spend all day cleaning your house. Or you can do it in maybe a few hours. But you also spend time with God, praying in the Spirit. Because you understand that one of these days, the fire is going to destroy your house. But people around you need to go to heaven. Can I have an amen on that? I am serious about this. For who is this? Is this? For everybody. Repent. Verse 39, and the promise, verse 38, of the Holy Spirit and the gift of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when I was 14. And I was in a youth camp, in this camp called... Hallelujah camp. Can't get any better than that. And we went to camp. Send your kids to come. Please send your kids to come. Let them just experience. Because when you live your life and everything you're doing to go and spend some time with God, I promise you will experience something from God. When the moment you say, I'm going to set a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, whatever it is. Listen, if you want to have this in your life, maybe... You need to say, I think God can make me live a good life sleeping an hour less in the night. And the Holy Spirit wake me up. But when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I was around all my friends from church, and some of them were receiving, they speaking, oh, they speaking, all this stuff. And I'm in the back, and God wanted to baptize me. But I always struggle with pride, greatly. And you know what was the first thing I said? Ma, that doesn't sound like nothing crazy. Ma, 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 but I feel God is doing something inside me. I feel his presence. I feel that something is going on. Something weird is going on. And I'm standing back there. And I'm, ma, 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 And the whole group of youth came and they prayed for me. And I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they guys keep saying, ma, 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 ma. And we all jump in a, in a truck, in a big old truck. We all sit on the floor. And I drove all the way home for two and a half hours saying, ma, 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 Bible doesn't says you have to have some special language or some special words for God to answer your prayer. What he is looking is a heart that cries out in prayer and supplication. Is your heart what matters? Is the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart what matters? Is what really matters is what God is doing through your life. Because the Bible says that he produces in us the willing and the doing. So if you want to live under the power of the Holy Spirit, the first thing you have to say, God, God, give me this because I am weak. And I want to live a life full of your spirit. And he wants to give you that. Jesus says, if you're a father and your son asks you for a bread, you're not going to give him a stone. He asks you for a fish, you're not going to give him a snake. How much more my father who is in heaven is going to give of his spirit of those who ask him of his spirit. Would you close your eyes right there where you are this morning? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody in this room has been baptized maybe days, maybe weeks, maybe years ago. 
and you did it and you used to do it and you used to live and you used to pray in the spirit but now you go to pray you struggle let me give you great advice do what I do I start praying in tongues and God wants to renew in you the ability to be a warrior like Paul says all the armor is necessary but you need to move in the spirit praying in the spirit in a place that only God can move there is others in this room who have never spoken in tongues the other day somebody received a baptism of the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues driving from work to home and they got home and they keep talking and they keep talking and they, God is turning around this man's life because he believed and it's not if you're saying la 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 mama it doesn't matter just allow the spirit and he's in this room believe it nothing from God you will not receive if you don't have faith and there is a fight right now going on a huge fight in some people's hearts and minds because you look at yourself and you're like my daddy and he couldn't receive the baptism of the holy spirit because he was a great student he was the greater the, the, the best student the, the student of the whole university of the bible in germany he was the president and others will receive the holy spirit and he couldn't he would go to his room mad after church and this dude was doing this and he is praying in tongues and God told him exactly because you think you're better than others and the moment he repent of his pride because he thought he was better boom he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit he spoke in tongues and prayed in tongues and sing in tongues the rest of his days I thank God that I grew up under the ministry of people who believed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Who believe in praying and singing in tongues. Who believe in prophecy. Who believe in the gifts of God. And I encourage you, doubt your doubts and believe, and believe what the Bible says and be filled with His Spirit. We're going to take a minute or two now to pray in tongues. And I'm going to encourage you, if you know how to pray in tongues, which you just pray in tongues to encourage others. And I'm going to ask you to, by faith, intercede specifically in your spirit for those who have not received this gift yet. And everybody else, if you just want to speak in tongues and start praying, do it. There is not a wrong way to do it because it's the Holy Spirit praying to you. You cannot do wrong by, by letting the Holy Spirit pray to you. That is the perfect prayer. Father God, we come before you this morning. And we ask you, let us start praying. know there is people in this room who knows how to pray in tongues. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Multitudes from miles start walking because these crazy guys were all speaking in tongues and that's how Pentecost happened. What's wrong with us? Let's pray. Sacando robo coyo senda la maradio so condo robo coyo sama maya saiba corro sonda la maradia sacando robo coyo sura mamaya sanda carabaca yarando robo por dios oro manando la maradia si caramaria siba corro sondo roba caya sara mandar la barari caya sara bacaya sonda urra baba caya sora mandar a barari so condo lo bararia siba you have to open your mouth and let God speak through you let the Holy Spirit speak to you this is the easiest thing you can do in prayer curra 
Maria Sanda la Maria Caria, lo solondo roba va Caia Sema, Kira Maria Sanda la Maria Socondo robo Coyo Suba. It takes faith, my friends, it takes faith to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be a better witness, to be a more powerful Christian, to have so much of the Spirit that when the enemy comes, you just say no because you know his lies. Curra Maria Sondo robo Comorio Soro Mondo la Maria Saca Mamanda Raba Caia Saba, Corro Sondo lo Maria Sama Mando robo Coyo Soro Mondo lo Maria Caia Siba, Curra Baba Caia Sama Manda Raba Caia Saba Manda Rio Lord, Lord, you promise us in the latter days you will send your Spirit and our daughters and our sons will prophesy and they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because this is for everybody who believes your word says, Father God, this is not just for the people 2,000 years ago and you say I'm going to give it to them but the church of the latter days the church of the last days is not going to have this power no this is for every one of my kids this is for every one of thy kids until Jesus comes back hallelujah 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 Father God I ask you that you would just pour a hunger a desire for you in this church a desire for you not only in those who have not received yet the baptism of the Holy Spirit but I ask you that you would put a desire a desire of, of you and the, 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 the the power of the Holy Spirit and praying in the Spirit and interceding in the Spirit and singing in the Spirit in those who are in this church to everybody God from the smallest one to the oldest one for every person in this room Father God I ask you that you will just fill us with your Spirit you will make us so hungry for you the people around us will say oh what's going on you're just going crazy no I'm going crazy about Jesus and I'd rather spend time with him than another hour in entertainment oh hallelujah Hallelujah, Jesus. 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 There is nothing I can do more than preach to you the truth of the gospel. You need to be hungry for it if you want to live it. You're probably tired of the flesh. You don't know, even know it, maybe. But God wants to fill you with His Spirit. Everybody with their heads down. Please close your eyes. This is not a curious moment. I want to see the hands of those who are hungry have more of God their lives and you want to start praying in tongues and receive the baptism of the Holy everybody with their eyes closed please I just want to see the hands keep it up please because I need to pray specifically for you I want to see those who are really hungry for this who really believe what the Bible says hallelujah hallelujah I see hands hallelujah I see many hands hallelujah young people men and women married people and single people in this room hallelujah who are hungry for him Father God, I ask you for those who have lifted their hands. They see, God, your word. They feel your spirit. And they feel inside of them the desperate need of something more from you. Lord, I ask you, I beg you, Jesus, that you will grant them. You are the one, Jesus, who baptized in the Holy Spirit. Your word says, I will baptize my kids in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Lord, I ask you for my sisters, my brother, the center on the right, on the left, all those who lifted their hands, Lord. I ask you, God, that you will do something amazing in their lives in the next few days, Lord. That you will come and take them to a place in their lives where they say, God, I'm not leaving you until you give me this power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I'm so hungry for you. I'm so desperate for you. I have experienced the world and left me empty and lonely. I want more of you, Jesus. And I ask you, God, that you will fill my brothers and my sisters. And they will start praying in tongues. And they will start moving, God, into the territory of the enemy. And they will start praying in the Spirit for people specifically and they will start seeing those souls come to you Jesus one by one by one because we know know how to pray but your spirit will lead us 
to pray with the utterance that comes from God. Lord, I ask you that you would wake up my brothers and my sisters in weird times of the night. And I ask you more that they will not even be tired and they have no desire to sleep. All they want is to be alone with you, Jesus. Lord, I ask you. Lord, I ask you. Lord, I ask you in these latter days your church will move to more holiness, to more service, to more consecration, to more power, to more of your spirit, more of the gifts of the spirit, more of what you intended for us to have. And you left us the example with the church in the book of Acts of how you want us to live, Lord. A church that loves each other. A church that fights for each other. A church that prays for each other. A praise that cares for each other. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.